controversial subjects with the facts can be tense. But we are a sub science here to make things make sense. Today we are joined by Emily Calandrelli, who is a scientist, former engineer at the MIT, also known as MIT. <laughs> Half of my name. <laughs> uh, epic yeah. science communicator, author of children's books, okay, host of Emily's Wonder Lab on Netflix, which is so exciting and we're obsessed with. And honestly, in this moment, I'm just like, Emily, like, what else do you say that you do? Because when I went on Wikipedia, I was like, this is an endless array of intense, amazing things. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I've been doing um, exploration outer space for seven years. That's what started my career in all of this. So that's a show on Fox about space meant for really like college age students. And okay. so now it's very confusing because I do the <laughs> stuff for like it, like itty bitty kids and then also college age level education. That's that's so that's so fun though. You get to like hit all the spots. You're like, okay, yeah. I'm gonna literally teach everyone. <laughs> everyone. I want everyone to know science. <laughs> um, truly, you're also like a TikTok star. You're amazing on Twitter. We're obsessed with you. How, like, why don't you give us a bit about like how you even got into space exploration and just being fascinated by that? Yeah. So I was actually a kid that did not care that much about science when I was little. Um, I didn't know any scientists or engineers, so I didn't really have anyone to look to and be like, oh, that's what one of those people does. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and so I, what I did have is my dad, um, he was someone who grew up in poverty in West Virginia, and he worked his way up to bring our family to middle class. And I remember when I was deciding what I wanted to be when I grew up, I had that legacy in the back of my mind. Um, and I looked up, literally, this is how I did it. I looked up all of the majors one could major in in college, and I looked at their starting salaries. Okay. And, <laughs> and I learned that engineers made good money. And so I was like, I went into college to study engineering thinking, these four years are going to suck. And it's going to be like the worst four years of my life, but I'm going to end up with a good job in the end. And my dad's going to be proud of me. Aww. And that's like literally how I got into it. But when I got there, I learned of all of the incredible adventures that one could have when they study science and engineering. I traveled the world. I worked at NASA. I like lived in China for a little while doing research. I did engineers without borders and solved, solved, worked on some problems in various countries. I learned not to say developing countries recently uh, yeah. from somebody's <laughs> TikTok. Uh, in the majority world, I worked in the majority world and helped to solve some of the issues there with the engineering things we learned in the classroom. Um, but I chose aerospace engineering because I wanted to fly on the vomit comet, which is something- Wait, oh, wait. Uh, is that the one where they, is that like when they test people like so they can go into space and they like pass out and stuff? Is that what that is? Oh, I was so, like, that's, <laughs> I thought that was just getting drunk on Friday. I was like, wait, I'm like, where is this going? Is your dad proud of you that you got wasted? But okay. <laughs> a little bit different. Uh, so the Vomit Comet is a plane that flies in the air like a 8,000 foot roller coaster in the sky. Oh. And they do that so that the people and the science experiments, because it's used as a laboratory, so that the people in the science experiments inside float weightless. Oh, and like it's also the same- test zero gravity? Like is that- Exactly. To oh test lots of things before they go into space. It's like a cheaper way to test it in a microgravity environment. Or I love that. Environment. <laughs> and it's also the same way they filmed um, movies like Apollo 13. To so, get them like, oh my gosh, were they just like going wait, up and they down? They just like the launched actors the actors like, up and down? <laughs> oh my God, really? They had to film it in like literally 30 second increments. And so if you I didn't did get it. I did not know that. <laughs> You'd have to like redo the parabola. <laughs> the, the actors are like, I'm vomiting truly all the time. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, and so, yeah, it's like 30 seconds of weightlessness, 30 seconds of being really heavy. And it just goes on and on and on for an hour and a half. Okay. I also was, okay, there's something else I was referring to. And I wonder if you know if it has a special name. It's like when astronauts sit in this thing and it like spins around so fast and then they like pass out. It's like the, yeah. zero, the, grab, the, the G's. It's a gyroscope. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, okay. Yeah. She's like have gyroscope. Have you ever been in that? <laughs> the G's. I have. Yeah. They, <laughs> have well, I mean, they have it at space camp. Um, oh and so God. I did adult space camp recently because I never did space camp as a kid. 
Uh, and so, yeah, you can, it just disorients you. It basically just like makes all of the fluid in your inner ear right. move every which way. And so your brain like has no idea which body, which way your body is moving. Oh my gosh. Wow. Well, that sounds fun. So you've really just sort of like <laughs> obliterated your body and you're like, I really want to do this so I could just obliterate my body in a variety of ways. For yeah, I, I like to confuse it um, to prepare for an eventual space flight maybe one day. Okay. So um, we really want to talk about we want to talk about that. We want to talk about the contest you're involved in. We want to talk about Mars Perseverance. We want to talk about commercial space flight. But before like, we do I that, might we might go to space. And I just, I'm like freaking about that. But like, <laughs> wait, but before we do that, we need, to talk, we need to talk about something that's more important, which is Cardi B. You are on, <laughs> you are on a podcast with two gay men. Uh, so we have priorities. Talking about this. <laughs> you filmed with Cardi B. When you posted that photo, I was like, Greg I was looked at Mitch and I was like, this is the best day of my freaking <laughs> life. I have like a one degree of separation. What are you even allowed to say? Like, how was it? What happened? <laughs> it was amazing. And I learned that I was going to be doing it literally like three days before we filmed. And oh so gosh. I drove down to L.A to film because they were like okay cardi b's filming this new show called cardi tries something and so each episode cardi is trying something new that's like outside of her com comfort zone look at me calling her cardi like we're friends <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, you know, yeah me and c cardi. no big deal cardi. <laughs> <laughs> me and cardi and so there was one episode where she wanted to learn how to basically be like a preschool teacher and so i came in and so maybe like a third of the episode is me teaching her how to teach kids about Science. Elephant so, toothpaste. Elephant toothpaste. We do this big classic experiments that I have done on basically like every live science show that I do because <laughs> people love that one. Um, but I didn't have all of the chemicals and <gasps> it takes like a week at least for chemicals to come in from a chemical supply company. And so I got hooked up from a TikToker who also does science experiments. He was like, I'm in the LA area. I have all the elephant toothpaste chemicals. Oh my so, God. A little like under, like a little <laughs> deal being done for Cardi B. Oh, it felt like to watch the text messages go back and forth. I was like, I feel like I would add, have to add some context to this. Right. Like I need, I need the stuff. Give me the, I need, I need I was the like, chemicals. Texting the producers of Cardi B being like, all right, my friend uh, <laughs> Dom is going to be at this address and he's going to have the chemicals and it's going to be about a thousand dollars. And uh, he said he'll be right outside the garage. Oh, oh my God. God. So this good. is like the coolest thing ever. I know you might that, go to space, but this is the coolest thing ever. That so kind how of reminds me of when we started ASAP science, like uh, our only expense is like whiteboard markers at the beginning. And our accountant was like, they're going to think you're running a drug operation because you're just like whiteboards only. And then just like having money come in for that. So, <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. It, it doesn't sound real, but, and then, so when we go to film, I'm on set and the scary part is that like she is filming something else before me and I can't set up in the background because I would be in her shot. And so they were like, okay, we'll tell you when you can go set up. And so I'm waiting with like all of my oh chemicals my in the background, just like waiting to go set up because elephant toothpaste can go awry. Like yeah. that is, <laughs> that's not something you want to just like do on a whim without right. measuring You want to set it up. I want to like this. I want to set it up. And also I don't want to be known as the girl who killed Cardi B. With <laughs> oh my God. We would not be having you on this podcast right now. Yeah, if you were like, the one who killed Cardi B. This <laughs> is not what I want to be known as. And so I'm like here in the background, like waiting to bring him all my chemicals and literally four minutes before they filmed they were like okay and like go ahead and set up and i was like you guys don't know how science experiments work and i'm like pouring oh. all the chemicals and i have all of my goggles and my oh. I have my gloves and everything and i'm like like okay 50 milliliters okay and i like have it all set up and then cardi comes out and i'm just like oh. <sighs> um you could not read that on your face in anything like you seemed so chill and so so you and then in that moment you met her for the first time then like when the cameras were rolling oh, and I was like, you guys gosh. need to, I'm like sweating. Give and me some oh, room. My <laughs> gosh. Give me a beat. But then the coolest part, here's the coolest part. So the people <laughs> that were watching the science experiment were all kids. They're all like preschool age. They were kids. so cute. They were so and cute. Funny. And when Cardi comes out and she stands next to me, all the kids go, Emily oh. from Emily's Wonder Lab. And Cardi looks at me like, She's like, How do they know oh, you? oh my God. Like, uh, Cardi B, move is... over one second. I'll do autographs after. Okay, kids. Uh. 
I was like, this is the only environment where like maybe a higher percentage of people in the room would like, know, know me. You. Oh my God. Party. That is so freaking like, cool. I was like, you six year old child have never made me feel. Yeah. Like you probably cool. wrote off that for like <laughs> weeks and weeks yeah. after. <laughs> that is so sweet. Okay. So just like what's she smell like? What's she like? Oh, <laughs> wonderful. Gorgeous. Like just like flowers and sprinkles and sunshine and she, her makeup was flawless like i've oh never seen anybody's skin look so perfect oh. and oh and of course like when you prepare for this you have all of these fantasies in your head of like well what if cardi like invites me to a party afterwards <laughs> Like, would so I you're go? kind of waiting, you're would lingering I, after, like, should I just, would I go? Um, oh my God. That didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> you're just oh hanging God. out with the kids after eating a burger, being like, yeah, yeah. The kids all are right. like, you want to come hang yeah. out with us? You're, you're like, like, I yeah, guess, I guess we'll just yeah. hang out here right, at I'll lunch. Go with you. <laughs> well, anyways, so I cool. loved it. It was so good. I love Cardi B. Now we will talk about space and things <laughs> which some people might argue are more important, but just so you know, that's where our heart is. Okay. True, true. <laughs> Um, space. Oh my gosh. It is the thing that we weirdly are, um, like we've always been like a drawn to like biology and the kind of like stuff we are. Maybe it's because I don't know why I've always felt it like overwhelming, scary, existential, even, um, what draws you towards space exploration, just understanding the cosmos? Yeah. For me, it's like, I don't know. I feel like it makes you think philosophically about, our place in the universe and how small we are and all of these like big questions like where did we all come from and are we alone in the universe and that's the kind of stuff that I don't know I think about at night and it makes me feel like at the same time really small but also really unique and important and I don't know that there it makes you feel things yeah I totally agree like I feel like that is the most beautiful aspect of it. Like sort of the, where do we come from? And it's also astounding. Do you, I think about it a lot at night too. And I, depending on the day, I'm like very, you know, scared or really inspired by it. So <laughs> obviously I see the inspiration come through with you, but does it also ever scare you? Or is there just something like I'm missing or it, it is just like the mix of both at the tension that makes it so interesting. Like scare you how, how does it scare you? <laughs> like it scares me because I think like, yeah, I, I kind of want to have an this feeling like I am like meaningful in some way. Mm. It makes me feel like I'm not meaningful, and I and I love so many aspects of it. But just like yeah, like where did we come from? Like it's it's honestly just like death and like meaninglessness <laughs> that scares me. Yeah, I yeah, like scary. Like your life is worthless. I get yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Like which is like pretty scary. And like if you say it like that, I couldn't even say it out loud. I'm like yeah, that I'm worthless. <laughs> it's that the, the fear is that I'm worthless. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. And at the same time, I think like it makes me feel this togetherness mm -hmm. with all of humanity. Like if we really are the only ones out here, then there's a reason that life hasn't been able to survive long enough elsewhere. And so that means we really got to get our stuff together and make sure that we are not also ones who follow a similar path and go extinct, like potentially other life forms in the past. And so... Yeah, I don't know. It huh. definitely makes you uh, try to be thoughtful about like, what are we doing as a species? Are we doing it right? Yeah, that's so that's a really cool way of thinking about it. I like that. It's like, I always have this assumption that, of course, there's other life in the universe. But why don't you just like for a moment think, OK, maybe there's not. OK, we are the only. Oh, mm. my God. Like, <laughs> like OK, yeah, there's a lot of interesting energy behind that and pressure yeah. to like, yeah, get it right. That's really cool. I'm mean, literally um, write that controversial down. question. <laughs> Do we think there's other life out there, though? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's impossible that there's not. Yeah, I'm like, I, I don't even think that's controversial. Like, of course. Or I just there mean is. like I I love to dibble dabble in the UFO conspiracy theories. So <laughs> I don't think there's life here. I like. Well, I mean, there, there's life here. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine she's like hot take. Oh, by the way, we aren't living. <laughs> oh yeah, like, it's Whoa. all a simulation. Yeah. It's not real. <laughs> uh, but no, I don't think there's alien life here. But I do think that there's like intelligent life somewhere in, yeah, in the, the universe, universe or some vast. form. I mean. We don't know what intelligent life means. We we define intelligent life by us. Yeah. And I mean, it's a very like human centric, egocentric way to think about intelligent life, but that's all we know. And so for us, when we're searching for intelligent life, we search for life that looks like us um, by listening for radio signals. So things like 
phones and all of the technology that we use, it communicates using these invisible light waves called radio waves that go spiraling through the universe at the speed of light, just waiting for anyone who might be listening. Um, and so for us, that's the way we search for life. We use radio telescopes to listen for these radio waves to see if there's any thing else in the universe using technology like us. Yeah, that is so interesting. It's like, maybe they're not sending radio waves. <laughs> you know I mean? like, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> they're just yeah. like, hello. And we're like, we can't detect that. <laughs> it would be crazy, though. Do you think in our lifetime, like, we'll ever like, catch some radio waves and be like, oh, this is not from humans. <laughs> this is, I mean, when I talk to SETI, so SETI stands for Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. When I talk to SETI scientists, they say that they do believe that we'll be able to find intelligent life in our lifetimes. Because we've only really been searching for intelligent life for like a little over 50 years. Mm. Like, that's not a, a long time. And also, we can only look in so many places. Like there's only so many radio telescopes. They're often searching right. in one part, one small part of the universe, but the universe is vast so. and huge. And so, yeah, I think with more time, we'll find that. Something. I know. I, actually, I don't know if you want, I was going to bring up my study because it kind of relates to that. Yeah, do it. Mine's not like so much a study, but I, I went and did like a little, um, what should I say? Like a history of like space paradigms or the way that humans have kind of like thought about it historically. So, you know, going from like, geocentric to heliocentric viewpoints mm. but just more recently in our lifetime just to be like oh when did some things we take for granted that we just thought we always believed or always knew mm. and i just like wrote them down and i thought we could just kind of chat about them so i'll say some of my favorites so it wasn't until 1922 that we discovered that the milky way was not the only galaxy like we they they thought like maybe every nebula and star was part of it oh, it wasn't dang. until then that like hubble was able to say like no andromeda is actually outside of our galaxy so it's like okay that's wild like you just kind of think like oh they didn't know that um <laughs> then 1920s is also when we discovered the universe was expanding was oh it? my god yeah it's so yeah. fun i didn't, haven't thought about that uh 1965 was big bang theory was like when they mm. uh detected cosmic microwave background radiation so they were like mm. okay we think that there was like a beginning and this is we're picking up on the result of that uh 1971 the first black hole was discovered it was theorized before that but i think that was like when they detected x-rays and they were like okay it's we have mm. like actual empirical evidence um, this one freaked me out. 1980 was the first proposal of an asteroid killing the dinosaurs. Doesn't that seem weird Whoa. to you? I'm just like, I grew up my whole life being like, oh yeah, the asteroid. Because you were born in 88. Yeah. And you had eight and years. So I just kind of was here. like, that is so weird to me. I would have thought like maybe that theory came out before that. Yeah, I, did de I definitely would not have guessed that. I, I want to talk to my parents and be like, so how dumb were you? What did you learn? Yeah. yeah. What, what did like, you think? And what happened when they were like, the universe <laughs> is expanding and they told you that? Yeah, where they wait. Yeah, I know. And that makes me excited about the things within our lifetime especially these next couple because it's like so much has actually happened within a pretty short period of time um so let's see what else did i have here 1992 was the first planets discovered outside of our solar system that's like not that long ago yeah you know what i mean yeah like not to say that's they the one that blows my mind because it's like the whole galaxy stuff that it, I, my mind has a hard time wrapping my brain around like, like the size of that, that but like yeah. <laughs> knowing that for sure that planets existed outside of the eight that we know of in our solar system. Like mm -hmm. that is the stuff that I'm just like, how did we not have evidence for that? That's and it wild. seems like it feels <laughs> like it's built in intuitive to, at least if you're like you're taking a science degree, you're like, Oh yeah. Stars generally have like rock formations that like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Go around them. Yeah. Not always, but like many do, but it's funny to think, okay, just a couple more. Um, or it was like, now we also know that there's like many thousands of planets we've actually confirmed are existing. 1998 is when they realized the expansion of the universe is speeding up. And that's when they were like, that doesn't make sense. There must be dark energy. And I was like, okay, I still don't understand that's, dark energy. So. <laughs> that's almost the year the Titanic came out. And I remember that. You so did, there you, you go. <laughs> and then 95 was when they discovered massive ocean of liquid water on Jupiter, which I actually didn't know. <laughs> um, and then 2016, first gravitational waves. And 2019, the first image of a black hole. Which we obviously like remember that moment. <laughs> Thank, I felt like That's clapping. Wild. Thank you, Mesh, for that timeline. <laughs> those were just, I'm sure there were many others in between, but I, those stood out to me as like, that's so yeah. weird sometimes where you live in existence yeah. where you just take something as 
like fact or just like that we've kind of known it for hundreds of years when it's really not that long ago we discovered so many things exactly yeah i mean it's like i think the story that people always remember is like remember when we used to think that earth was the center of the solar system yeah what we're such idiots but <laughs> now i think that we don't realize that the things that we know today we're going to be surprised we're wrong in the future about just like how we think the universe works and so anytime i've learned that um, through those historic moments, mostly any time we have learned, we have thought that we are special, we have been wrong. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, oh, I we're mean, not the center of the solar system. Like, Ugh, oh, <laughs> like our solar system's not the center of the galaxy. Oh, we're not the only galaxy. It's like, yeah. you are not special. <laughs> in no like, how can the universe is trying to tell us something? But maybe in special. that way, everything is special. No one thing is special, you know? And that's, that's yeah. also a beautiful Aww, message. Cute. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that brings us to our most recent sort of whooshy woo woo moment, which is Mars Perseverance, which you were so like, I don't know, I really found the way that you talked about it so beautiful and elegantly. Um, so yeah, like, what was that like for you as someone who actually understands <laughs> these things? Like, well, how, how big of a deal is it for like us and the listeners who might not understand? Yeah, so NASA landed its fifth rover on Mars, um, and there have been many countries that have tried to send robots to Mars, and only like 50% of those have been successful. It is oh, just wow. very difficult to get to Mars, and then not just to get to Mars, but to get into Martian orbit, and not just to get into Martian orbit, but to land something softly, not crash land, on the surface. And all of those things need to work perfectly for it to go as planned and not crash into lots of flames. And so <laughs> this, um, this lander, it had, it's so big that they have this like very complicated sequence of events to land it that they call the seven minutes of terror. And because Mars is so far away from earth, there's a, a communications delay. It just takes a long time for radio waves to reach, um, Earth and Mars. There's an 11 minute communications delay. So because of all of these things, they need to happen exactly at the right time in real time. You can't autonomously just like use a joystick and yeah. land <laughs> I love plane. that. That's totally what people are picturing. Just like a little drone. Like, yeah, like okay, you see just, all like, those people it. in the, like the, the <laughs> hub and you're like, are they literally controlling it right now? <laughs> exactly. They've done all of the work ahead of time. And so there is a sequence of events that happen to happen in exactly the right moment at exactly the right order. And everything goes, needs to go perfectly over the course of seven minutes. Um, and it did. And when it happened, it's like, I have friends who worked on this rover because I, wow. I studied aerospace engineering. So a lot of my friends have been working on this rover and to watch them watch that, it just, oh. it makes me emotional because there, there's so few jobs where you wor work on something for like mm -hmm. five, 10, 15 years and Before then get to see a like, moment like yeah. that. Yeah. That is like, wild. And how much that moment is like so nerve wracking where it's like in the last minute, something could go wrong. And then it's just like, Oh, <laughs> and it's on Mars. Yeah, <laughs> and it's like it's like it's on Mars. Okay. Yes, I mean it's like it's so wild to me. Um, and so now Percy, it's that's its nickname. Percy is oh, going to be cute. Searching. I did not you got, know you that know we can Cardi, call it Percy. You know Percy. Yeah. Cardi and Percy. You know, my Cardi two best and friends. Percy, my two girls. <laughs> <laughs> my two girls, my two best friends. Um, we we all love science. That's how we know each other. Uh, so Percy is searching for ancient life on Mars, which is wow. a really cool deal i mean talking about life in the universe um but they're not searching for dinosaurs or bones right. or anything like that. imagine they're, searching for... they're like a brontosaurus <laughs> that would really <laughs> that would really yeah. <laughs> yeah like imagine it found something so absurd like that where we if like... it found a dinosaur i i think scientists... <laughs> a, li a living dinosaur too imagine. a living dinosaur <laughs> yeah, like all those like videos oh my god it's been there the whole time. Where How did been? we miss it? Um, <laughs> it no, no English. dinosaurs, probably. <laughs> yep. Um, but no, probably nothing like that. They're searching yeah. <laughs> for microbial life. So right. like fossilized microbes, basically. Does it take just samples? Like how do the scientists and researchers actually know? It's like, coming back with stuff, right? Oh, it comes back? Well, or it's so them. yes and no. There is some stuff that they can do on the surface of Mars where they can take pictures and do analysis of soil samples there. But the goal, and this would be just like amazing because this has never happened before, but the goal is first he's going to take core samples and then leave them 
on Mars for a future mission to hopefully pick up and bring them back to Earth. Uh, there's only like so much science you can put on a rover. Into one thing, yeah. Into one thing. And so you can do good science, but the world's scientists, scientists and science instruments are back here on Earth. So if you can bring that stuff back to Earth, That's just, wild. I mean, there's is so that, much more science. Is that do. part of it, Percy's plan? Like, is that part, like, they, mm -hmm. they say in X amount of time, we're hoping to send another thing for over to pick it up? It would be another mission. So that mission has to get funded. And okay. so I think everybody at NASA is like, right. Come on. Yeah, because I guess if this one like crash landed and didn't work, it would be like... Yeah, okay. Percy's <laughs> making a couple <laughs> bottles right. of uh, sand and stuff. We're not just going to leave them there and not get them. I know. It'd be so rude. That'd be so rude. She'd be like, um, hello. It's like waiting for you. Okay, this, this, is, this is bringing us to the juicy, juicy questions we have, which is about commercial space flight. Okay? <laughs> we, like, I want to know more about this. So SpaceX... Starlink, like that's about going to Mars, commercial space flight. Like, where are we at with that if we're not sure about another mission going to pick up Percy's bottles? But we're like, but, <laughs> but, like, people. we're gonna go, like, live there. Like, I'm just like, it's, it's just like such a cognitive dissonance for me. And I was doing some research too. Like, my main understanding for a lot of like what SpaceX is trying to do is like reusing aerospace technology as opposed to having like, like, a one time use thing, like making it more marketable, making it more commercial. And then in that way, the hope is that it revolutionizes more quickly, kind of like the way we did with airplanes. Like, what's your opinion on that as someone who actually understands these things? And like, where do you think that we're at and where are we going to go from here? Yeah. So to sort of like give some context, the through the history of time up until recently, the only people doing space exploration were large government agencies of different countries, right? Those were the only people that could afford to do it. Um, and so for the longest time, it was NASA working and contracting with private companies like Boeing and Lockheed and those names that you might recognize. But it was NASA really setting the terms of the technology and operating the technology and NASA was really in control. Now, space exploration has gotten a little cheaper. NASA wants to push the envelope of exploration and, and focus their resources on things that have never been done before. And so in the last 10 years, there's been a shift to reallocate a lot of the stuff that they've been doing in low Earth orbit. So the easier stuff that they've been doing for years over to private companies like SpaceX. Okay. And so SpaceX would not exist without NASA. Right. SpaceX, like they needed the like the technologies, the research that NASA- The like, contracts, the right. money, like that's the, <laughs> like they would not exist without NASA contracts. Okay. Their business wouldn't be possible. Is, right. um, and so they rely a lot on government contracts to make their business model work because space is still very expensive, even though the cost has gone down. Um, and so now NASA is working with um, SpaceX to shuttle astronauts and cargo to the International Space Station in low Earth orbit, and they're working on that. Um, and now, because SpaceX owns and operates their own vehicles, now they can sell those rides to private space, to tourists or billionaires or other people who want to go to space um, or companies that want to get their satellites in space and things like that. And while NASA at the same time is focusing on bigger things like mm. bringing the next man and the first woman to the moon through right. the Artemis program. Mm. Um, so that's the kind of the layout. That's right so now. interesting. So the, the like competition that you are involved in, where you're trying to get people. What's the name of it? Yeah, again? what is it? Explain, explain that actually. For... Ah, yes, inspiration for. So uh, the billionaire who has purchased a ride to space is Jared Isaacman. He has his company is Shift for Payments. It's kind of a payment system that you'll see at like lots of various businesses, brick and mortar businesses. Um, I recently saw it in a hotel, um, and so he bought this trip to space, which is very expensive. And he donated, at the same time, he donated $100 million to St. Jude. Now, he wanted to use, he wants to use this contest to raise even more money for St. Jude. And so, he's giving away the other three seats on the rocket. Okay. One is going to a St. Jude ambassador, which has already been announced. One is going to, um, it's kind of like a raffle 
to people who have donated to St. Jude. You just have to donate like $10, I think, for one raffle ticket and you can donate up to like a thousand and then it, that's like the max limit of raffle tickets. Um, so you can't just donate like right. a ton I'm of money like... and then win. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, <laughs> And then the fourth seat is the one that I am vying for, which is the entrepreneurial seat. Um, and so you had to submit a video on Twitter of your inspirational business story and say why you wanted to get be chosen to go to space. And so that has way that is what I have done. Oh my god, I'm so excited <laughs> is for that you. They are just going to choose someone from that, or is it um, like yeah? Like how can people help out? It... Like it, how how will it help you? Like is it through Twitter only or? Yeah, so it is, it's judged on four main criteria, one of which is its viral ability. So people sharing each other's videos, right, like that like helps. Okay. That's, oh yeah, I mean, that's like, that's one of the big pillars, I think. And of course, because I think these people are trying to use it as a way right, to promote, to promote. Yeah. the contest. So of course they want it to be shared <laughs> yeah. a lot. Um, and so, yeah, there's a lot of really great people who have so applied. So what is your but, Twitter yeah. handle just right now? So people can just go do it. Um, it's at the Space Gal. Uh, the contest is over on Sunday. So I'm not sure this will oh, air. Oh, no! Okay. okay. Well, we'll shout it out more. <laughs> and, <also. laughs> and you know what? You know what you can do? You go on Twitter and you just type in to these people. And you say, I know that it, it ended last Sunday, but so, you know, I'm still really hoping for at the Space Gal. Wait, on Sunday, <laughs> yes. are they picking someone or that's just as long as... That's just when the, like, like I think the, the submissions are in. Okay. That's so the oh, so so People could email, views, people could put pressure, people could put pressure. Even, even after <laughs> Sunday, okay? So that's go. That's exactly right. Because that's <laughs> yeah. when the judging starts. Because exactly. now there's like lots of famous judges that are, um, including Mark Rober, Oh, I think I saw him tweet you being like, um, I'm one of the judges. I'm a judge. And I was like, what? Um, oh, my God. Okay, wait. Exactly. So who Have are I ever told you how him? smart you are, Mark Rober? <laughs> <laughs> wait, so who are who are the other, like, who are the judges? I didn't even think about that. Um, Mark Benioff of Salesforce. Um, and then uh, there's two others that I have forgotten. But Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. So there's, so there's, a, there's like a team. Oh, a team. My yeah. oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. And so, so when does that happen? Like, when is that scheduled for? Or is it just kind of up in the air right now? They have <clears> said <throat> by the end of the year. And I, like, I don't. What? <laughs> well, it's no, like, get out of here. No. I know you can. Wild. <laughs> that's, no, that's, that, that's not no way. Like, that in my head, I'm like. Crazy. So, okay. Like, oh, my God. Going from a pandemic to just like, no, oh, I'm in space. <laughs> like, I just said, like, that is wild. <laughs> is it? Like you go into space and then just like float out there for a while or are you going to the space station or? You would just go around the world and they, they don't know how long the mission is, but okay. it, like I've heard something like three to four days. And so wow. you just circle the earth like I think it's what is it like 16 times a day. Um, and so, wow. yeah. Greg, would, would you do that? Like, no. I, I'm not, not like why. <laughs> I just mean in general, like, would you go to space? I'm so scared. No, 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 no. I'm fine on the ground. I'm fine on the ground. I hate flying. I hate flying. Because I actually thought. No, I I love it for you. (laughs) (laughs) I love this look for you, Emily. (laughs) I don't know. I I think I would, but maybe I'm too scared right now. I don't know why. Like, there's something about it that feels. But it would be. You'll never ever forget that. Obviously, if you do it. Oh yeah. I mean, I know why. It's super dangerous. Like, I might die. (laughs) Oh my god! Imagine after all of this. Like I've already thought. Like of the letters I would write my daughter before I would oh. get on the rocket, oh just in gosh. case. Like, oh I, this, my god! I don't think people. I, I, like, I'm sure a lot of people who are applying know this, but like, this system has only flown humans successfully like twice. Oh so, my god! Now wait, I'm like, are you part of a really? problematic contest? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think there are. I mean, what does that people mean? do it's risky only... things all the time. Yeah, so. yeah, like drive a car. <laughs> Truly, like drive a car. Or like jump out of a plane. I mean, there are things. Yeah. This is an extreme sport. This is right. the most extreme sport that you could do. And I do... think it's important that people know that when they're yeah. taking that risk. Yeah. I would be taking that risk for the people who see themselves in me of to course, go. Yeah. Because yeah. like for me, I'm from West Virginia. We've never had a West Virginia woman go to space ever. Wow. And so like... Appalachia has been having a really hard time the last like few decades. And I think that if I could go to space and just do a statewide tour of West Virginia and tell them how like for the first time ever, a oh West Virginia God. girl reached the stars like yeah. that. Right. Think, think of how many people that, that would, would change. change. My heart's a flutter. Okay. Question. We're not like you. 
this is probably like a thing that maybe some people know, but like West Virginia is number one in the whole country when it comes to the fewest percentage of people that believe global warming is happening. And so I would love to use this experience to show them how fragile our planet is, how thin the earth is. It's like a perspective you can really only see when you leave the planet. And I think that powerful story would be really helpful to kind of change hearts and minds back home. Okay, you got it I down, it Emily. So I really want you to go to space. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'll be and then a few years, dying. I'll run for Senate, and then we'll just we'll turn the seat around. Ah! <laughs> I don't even know where West Virginia is. So sorry. <laughs> We're Canadian. So. We're Canadian. That's my excuse. Truly. Really. I have a rough That's idea. Fine. Actually, I don't. Um, I'm like, where's Virginia? It's west of it? <laughs> yes. Okay. Good, good I feel so bad saying that out loud to you because I just you just said there were struggles. I mean, there is a lot of states. <laughs> I don't know a where lot, all the states And are. it really is like, I, I know where the, I shouldn't say the main ones. Obviously, we know where like California, New York, and Florida. I know where Alaska is because Alaska. it's like, you're in Canada. Like, what are you doing? But a lot of the middle ones, I just am like, hey, we never have to learn them in school because we're Canadian. I hope that doesn't hurt your feelings. Um, do you know where Alberta is? Oh, yeah, no. Okay, good. Yeah, good. Oh, thank okay, God. God. The, the yeah, no, you duped us. When you said yeah, I, know, I was, was like, like oh, I thought you were like, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. No, I don't. I like, I'm horrible at geography. Okay, good. I love so how you just either. had to defend yourself by no. throwing one at her. <laughs> Where's Alberta, Emily? I didn't, I, I'm sorry. I didn't yeah. mean to do that. I more meant like, I hope it's like, you're not so offended. That we <laughs> like, we're both scumbags. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, okay. I, uh, what was I going to ask? Like, uh, uh, oh, why... So there's only been two person missions in like, what does that mean? Is it because they've only done it so many times or has it failed a bunch of times or what does that mean? Oh, no, no, no. So it, it's been, they've been working a very long time on perfecting the cargo aspect of the rocket, of their Falcon 9 rocket. And that's been going extremely well. That's the one that you see when you watch the rocket launches and it comes back, the booster yeah. comes back and lands on land. Like, that's really cool. So, and that's what makes done it SpaceX kind of, kind of unique, right? Is that they're like, instead of it being like single use plastic vibes, it's like they're trying to <laughs> be like, we can bring it back. We can and bring it back. And, it and that for some reason is new. Is that new? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, it, traditionally, you would launch a rocket into space and then throw away the entire rocket. Wow. Which, I didn't know that either. But and, other than like a shuttle that would come back later or like, does it or, land in the exactly. ocean or whatever? Okay. Yeah, like, like a shuttle, the space shuttle was partially reusable, um, but oh, the okay. traditional rockets, those long skinny Natural things rocket, with the capsule yeah. on the top, like they, Just you would you throw them away. They wow. would be garbage. Um, and so as you can imagine, that makes space flight really expensive because mm. the analogy that's always used is that if I flew from California to New York and they threw away the plane <laughs> when I landed, oh like, yeah. ticket prices would, would be, be a, lot. a lot higher. <laughs> wow. Okay. Okay. So I see that's like, that's sort of the mantra of SpaceX and like how they're like, we're pushing space flight and it will be cheaper because those rockets are now going to land safely. and We're going to reuse them. Exactly. Part of it, at least. And so they've like revolutionized the space industry by perfecting this. And now it's forcing all of the traditional players that have been in this industry for a long time and weren't forced to innovate really at all to start innovating and Mm. making things a bit more efficient. Interesting. Okay. So, but then, but then it's like, we're going to go to Mars. And I'm like, okay, where is that? Like, when's that happening? You know what I mean? I'm just like, we like (laughs) the seven minutes of terror. Okay. Have fun with that one when you're in it. When a human's in it. Yeah. What do you feel about that? I mean, it's been like, Musk talks a lot about Mars and I, 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 I don't, that's not something that I see happening for a very long, very long time. It's just, it's so expensive. You would need NASA. You would need probably multiple government agencies involved. It would have to be an international collaboration. It takes just a lot of political will and just a lot of cash. Mm -hmm. And things like that take time. And so not only does it take all of those things, but it has to exist over administration changes. Right. So Uh, you'd have to have someone like- like a agreeable goal enough that everyone's pushing towards it regardless of like political changes. Oh my God. Exactly. Speaking of humans and like, like, are we doing it right? It's like, okay, good luck with that one. (laughs) It's like administrative, like you have issues within countries, let alone like more than one country trying to, wow. Yeah. Do you think in our lifetimes it will happen? Oh yeah. yeah, I mean, it. I definitely. Wait, what? I definitely you do? do? Oh my <laughs> to god! To send humans to Mars? Yeah. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. my God. That's so... My brain just did a loop de We're going to live like, so long. We've got, like, 70 <laughs> more years. Come on. Okay, you're about to go on a death mission, potentially. So, you know, hold your breath. I'm kidding. I'm I kidding. may not be around to see yeah. it. <laughs> I'm kidding. Wow, no, that's really exciting. Like, that will be a really wild moment if that happens. Like, we'll all oh, be yeah. glued to Oh, our my TVs. God. We're going to... as. My gay ass is gonna watch Grimes live stream a concert from Mars. Are you oh kidding? Oh my god, you're right. That's oh, my yeah. dream. Is that what she's planning right now? Of course. I'm like, I'm always like, what's going on with this Grimes Elon Musk thing? I'm like, for sure in the back of her head. She's like, girl, she's I'm like, just I, I want to do a concert from Mars. It's all it's my brand. And we're all just sitting here being like, are they in love? It's like, no, she wants to do a concert from Mars. Yeah, I am for the long game. Yeah. And, and do you think just in terms of like commercial space flight, like kind of what you're like um, trying to get out and do, do you think that will become much, much more common in our lifetimes as well? Yeah, there's multiple companies that have been working on it for a very long time. The other one that I love is Virgin Galactic. Virgin Galactic has a space plane that has been flying trips to space um, and they're trying to do um, missions where you would experience weightlessness really for like five minutes at a time, um, mm. and then come back home. But it's a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar trip, Whoa. which wow. is like is is expensive. But, but um, in the grand of money, scheme of things, <laughs> yeah. Like like the SpaceX launch. I mean, basically, this contest is giving away like a fifty million dollar prize. That's wow. how much it costs right. yeah, to, to go, go into space. So it's wow. like. And, and the difference is, is that the SpaceX one will actually go into orbit around uh, the Earth and be up versus there for days. the Virgin Galactic is more like an up down. It's like a roller up, coaster. Down. An <laughs> intense version yeah. of what you talked about earlier, the G-Force thing. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Wow. And so that one's really cool. There's been lots of famous people that have already bought tickets like Justin Bieber and Katy Perry and Ashton Kutcher and Angelina Jolie. Just like Jolie tentatively or it's like they have actually booked I From the data that I have heard uh the evidence wow. i've heard is that they have actually physic they've bought tickets okay. um and so and this is presumably all oh just God. like thrills right like just to be some of yeah. the first people who get to like go up in a rocket <laughs> into or like into like you know, oh my god justin bieber and katie very battling out for who's gonna have their first single being like <laughs> the perspective all... of space or like yeah. whatever and then they chris have to, like, hatfield's like i already did it yeah <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Um, yeah. Oh my god, this is so helpful. Thank you. Yeah, I have I have one more question. <sighs> uh, that's kind of like not controversial, and you've talked about it online. Is what what do we think about people kind of asking the question, "What's this all for?" You know, you're, if someone has to pay fifty million dollars to go to space, we just spent a rover to land on Mars for what? When we have so many problems on Earth and poverty on Earth, and and like I know you've talked about it a bit, yeah. so I just wanted to bring that up. Yeah, it's a great question. I think it's like a valid question, especially anytime we're spending government money on this stuff, because then it's like, okay, that is, we should always be asking whether or not that's being used efficiently. Hmm. Um, and so I, what I always say is that NASA, we don't realize how little money is spent on NASA in comparison to yeah. other things. Like the U.S. spends like $11 trillion on like defense and fighter yeah, like the and wars military. and submarines and stuff. Yeah, we know yeah, we're from Canada. We're like, like, hey, America, like, what's going on? Do you need all those battleships? <laughs> but anyway, exactly. <laughs> and we're always pointing at NASA, being like, NASA, come on, right? And so NASA only they only uh, give NASA about a half a percent of the federal budget, and mm. they do quite a bit with that. And so when we send a rover to Mars, it's not like we are shipping money to Mars that money is being spent here on earth for really great science and engineering jobs to support mm. families here back on earth. Um, but at the same time, in addition to all of that, like the reason we are sending a rover to Mars is to help answer two of the biggest questions that humans have ever asked. Where did we all come from? And are we alone in the universe? And I think it is inherently worthwhile to try to work to understand our place in the universe because that is what makes us human. Yeah, wow. Yeah, it's That's so, so true. true. Like that is truly what anyone who looks at uh, like space, when you can see the stars on a good clear night, I think everyone has that moment where it's just like, what, <laughs> why are we here? Is there something else out there? And I do think that is truly a fundamental question that is worth yeah pursuing and it's poetic and, and inspiring like it can yeah. lead to so many things that you could never tangibly be able to yeah i think that's a hard thing like that a dollar so value. much of like the edge of science research leads to so much um progress here on earth as well right like spending that money 
may not seem obvious that like okay it's going into a rocket ship how does that help me but like the the like the invention of computers and the like there's so many aspects of just like creating technology that probably started with nasa or like probably started somewhere in government research that and i think you said it best once you were like it doesn't both things can be true like we can invest in things here on earth we can uh like take care of people and we should and we can do space exploration at the same time yeah exactly and i i think the big like cognitive dissonance here is that people think that like the problems that we have here on earth would be solved with more money. Hmm. And the big point is that the bottleneck with a lot of these issues is not necessarily more money. It's yeah. political will. That's so it's not true. that we don't have the money to solve them. It's that we choose not to. Um, and so pointing at NASA and being like, Hey, NASA, yeah. no, that's a like, really yeah. good give point. Me. Cause people often like, so say true. that like like we could feed the whole world right now if we want to like there's more than enough food on the earth for people who are there are kids going starving in parts of the world but it's the problem isn't that there isn't enough food it's like it's a much right. bigger interconnected problem and i um, but i see how it's like frustrating <laughs> to be like we've spent all of this money to land a robot on another planet and i can't get health care or yeah. my electricity is crap and nobody's fixing it like i i see how that you see yeah. that and you're just like and it definitely didn't help that it was so happening at the same time yeah. as like the texas crisis with electricity and the snowstorms and stuff i'm sure people were just like yeah. what the hell um, yeah exactly but yeah no space is so cool it's so fascinating um do you think like so obviously you're like an amazing science communicator do you see your life like do you still use your like aerospace engineering in your life mm. practically or do you want to be somebody who uses your voice to inspire others or what do you see yourself mm -hmm. doing in the future I mean, not day to day. No, like, I mean, I, I think I, I use my education practically in the sense that I just learned how to learn and I learned how to efficiently answer questions. Um, and so now I just use that same skill set to help others learn. Cause for me, I was like what I think other people would consider a slow learner. And it takes me a while to really grasp something. And so I keep myself in mind when I'm trying to teach others and mm. try to explain it in a way that I would have needed it to be under, to be explained so that I could have understood it. Um, but like when I was pregnant uh, two years ago, I designed and built a high altitude balloon that sent my ultrasound to the edge of space because I thought that <laughs> sounded fun. <laughs> so like a oh my God, I love that. <laughs> so That's sometimes so... I use it. <laughs> 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 oh my gosh, that's so good. Oh, wow. Okay, that is like so smart. I wish I could do that. We don't have oh any practical God. skills like I that. Like we're it. purely me theory. trying to do that with like a helium balloon. It's like a bursting. It's like me like on trying the tree. to literally put a picture frame up. I'm like, yep, can't do it. <laughs> like I can, I can read, but I <laughs> no practical sense in anything. <laughs> Oh, man. Well, I, okay. I want you to make sure people know where they can find you. Like you have a killer TikTok that we're obsessed with. It, are all your handles the same in different spots or let us know where people yeah. can find you. Yeah. It's all, all the space gal on TikTok and Twitter and Instagram and Facebook and all of those. Do you feel really epic places. that you got that name and like everywhere you want it? Oh yeah. <laughs> the, that was, I was so like, my nickname was always MCAL, Emily Calandrelli, MCAL since high school. And so originally I was MCAL space gal and I would tell people this and they thought I was saying like, I was a cow, like in cow, the space gal. And I, was cow, like, uh, I should change that. Yeah. So shortened it. And watch Emily's Wonder Lab on Netflix. Yes. Oh my Emily's gosh. Okay, Wonder wait, Lab on Netflix. Quick little touch on that. Like what was that experience? Like for anyone who doesn't know, Emily has an amazing Netflix series. That we don't have kids, but we still yeah, love watching I still it. Watched it. <laughs> and I got my, like my, uh. my niece is like obsessed with you. I was like, I know her. And she was like, oh you know, like gosh. I was like bragging to my niece. I was like, I'm friends with Emily. <laughs> like I've been pitching science shows to major networks for a very long time. And I have been getting lots of no's. I mean, that is just the, the, what this business is like. It's just getting shot down all of the time and just having to get back up and keep pitching different ideas. And so when I went to Netflix with this idea, um, and then they called a few months later and said they wanted it. Like, I cannot tell you the tears that were shed oh. <laughs> well, it's when so I got good. that call. Because that's the other thing, you have to pull so it off happy. and you, yeah, you did like such it, a great it's, job. It's so well done. Thank you. It's such a good show. You're so good You could good get to that camera. point and then it could like flop or it could be just like not what you wanted oh, to be. I but know. obviously and it I mean, all came it, together. 
it like you just we worked with the right people that we all had the same vision in mind and it just it's one of those things where everything seems to come together and i was also like when they told me yes um they had just learned that i was pregnant like i literally just <laughs> launched my balloon and they saw <laughs> my ultrasound from space and they were like so um should we film this before or after the baby comes and i was like I don't know what it's like to have a baby. <laughs> oh my God. I hear it's hard. Um, so let's, <laughs> let's film this before the baby comes. And so that's why I filmed it nine months pregnant wow. because I was just so nervous to ha do it afterwards. Um, but yeah. Glad but that's that so cool. I feel like a lot of people really resonated with that. And that was like an amazing thing that I don't know, but certainly a lot of women were just like connected to that. Uh, and and little that. girls, little girls would like, I get messages from little girls that were like, I am so happy to know that now I can be a mommy and a scientist. And oh like, my God. Uh, that's wow. cute. That is so That's really cry. sweet. Yeah, okay. Oh. You should, you're okay. It's like looping back to the beginning of the podcast, I'm sure your dad is proud <laughs> of all the <laughs> things you've done and are continuing to do. We're so proud of you. I, like, yeah, we, we love you. We've only known you for a little while, but like, honestly, just as an internet friend, like so proud of you. So lucky to know you and so excited to, you know, hang out once the pandemic's over and we can all yes. space, uh, and safely hang out in space. <laughs> uh, and like make huge fans of your TikToks. I mean, you guys are just like... I love that you're kind of Unhinged. getting outside of the ASAP uh, brand a little bit. <laughs> Super fun. Yeah, we get a lot of comments of like, this is very different than the YouTube channel. <laughs> Unhinged, some might yeah. say. <laughs> I like it. Oh, well, thank, thank you, you so, so much, much for coming on the podcast. Uh, we're so excited to see what's next. Everyone, please go check out Emily's video on Twitter um, to make sure that you're signal boosting that. Get her to space. Got the space I gal. Will literally cry if Emily goes to space. <laughs> yeah, I I will too. I, I <laughs> thank okay. you. Well, uh, for everyone listening, uh, hashtag side note podcast. If you want to chat with us, otherwise, we'll see you next week. Peace. Bye. Bye.